strategy was to try to break new ground, but at the same time not to require use of the new GPU capabilities. For more than a decade, GPUs have imposed a restriction on game engines. Software handles vertex processing, but for the most part, dedicated hardware is responsible for the triangles and other geometry that the vertices form. That means it's not possible to do even basic optimizations, such as aborting processing of a vertex if all geometry that uses it is off screen. PlayStation 5 has a, a new unit called the Geometry Engine, which brings handling of triangles and other primitives under full programmatic control. As a game developer, you're free to ignore its existence and use the PlayStation 5 GPU as if it were no more capable than the PS4 GPU, or you can use this new intelligence in various ways. Simple usage could be performance optimization, such as removing back-faced or off-screen vertices and triangles. More complex usage involves something called primitive shaders, which allow the game to synthesize geometry on the fly as it's being rendered. It's a brand new capability. Using primitive shaders on PlayStation 5 will allow for a broad variety of techniques, including smoothly varying level of detail, addition of procedural detail to close-up objects, and improvements to particle effects and other visual special effects. Another major new feature of our custom RDNA 2-based GPU is ray tracing, using the same strategy as AMD's upcoming PC GPUs. The CUs contain a new specialized unit called the Intersection Engine, which can calculate the intersection of rays with boxes and triangles. To use the Intersection Engine, first you build what is called an acceleration structure. It's data in RAM that contains all of your geometry. There's a specific set of formats you can use. They're variations on the same BVH concept. Then, in your shader program, you use a new instruction that asks the intersection engine to check array against the BVH. While the intersection engine is processing the requested ray triangle or ray box intersections, the shaders are free to do other work. Having said that, the ray tracing instruction is pretty memory intensive, so it's a good mix with logic heavy code. There's of course no need to use ray tracing. PS4 graphics engines will run just fine on PlayStation 5, but it presents an opportunity for those interested. I'm thinking it'll take less than a million rays a second to have a big impact on audio. That should be enough for audio occlusion and some reverb calculations. With a bit more of the GPU invested in ray tracing, it should be possible to do some very nice global illumination. Having said that, Adding ray traced shadows and reflections to a traditional graphics engine could easily take hundreds of millions of rays a second, and full ray tracing could take billions. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a PlayStation 5 title that's successfully using ray tracing based reflections in complex animated scenes with only modest costs. Another set of issues for the GPU involved size and frequency. How big do we make the GPU, and what frequency do we run it at? This is a balancing act. The chip has a cost, and there's a cost for whatever we use to supply that chip with power and to cool it. In general, I like running the GPU at higher frequency. Let me show you why. Here's two possible configurations for a GPU roughly of the level of the PlayStation 4 Pro. This is a thought experiment. Don't take these configurations too seriously. If you just calculate teraflops, you get the same number. But actually, the performance is noticeably different because teraflops is defined as the computational capability of the vector ALU. That's just one part of the GPU. There are a lot of other units. And those other units all run faster when the GPU frequency is higher. At 33% higher frequency, rasterization goes 33% faster. Processing the command buffer goes that much faster. The L2 and uh, other caches have that much higher bandwidth, and so on. About the only downside is that system memory is 33% further away in terms of cycles. But the large number of benefits more than counterbalance that. As a friend of mine says, a rising tide lifts all boats. Also, it's easier to fully use 36 CUs in parallel than it is to fully use 48 CUs. When triangles are small, it's much harder to fill all those CUs with useful work. So there's a lot to be said for faster, assuming you can handle the resulting power and heat issues, which frankly, we haven't always done the best job at.
Part of the reason for that is, historically, our process for setting CPU and GPU frequencies has relied on some heavy-duty guesswork with regards to how much electrical power games will consume and how much heat will be produced as a result inside of the console. Power consumption varies a lot from game to game. When I play God of War on my PS4 Pro, I know the power consumption is high just by the fan noise. But power isn't simply about engine quality. It's about the minutia of what's being displayed and how. It's counterintuitive, but processing dense geometry typically consumes less power than processing simple geometry, which is, I suspect, why Horizon's map screen, with its low triangle count, makes my PS4 Pro heat up so much.